New at noon, former UA Little Rock and current Texas head basketball coach Chris Beard arrested overnight. We have the details just ahead. It is flu and cold season for us humans, but did you know it's also flu season for your dogs? Coming up, how you can keep your four-legged family members safe and sound from those viruses. And you may already be stretching your wallet to buy gifts for your family and friends this holiday season, but the cost of Christmas is hitting people in other ways as well. We're taking a closer look coming up at 1217. Thanks for joining us here at noon. I'm Hayden Balgavy hanging out with meteorologist Nathan Scott. Nathan, it has been dreary. It has been foggy when we got here at three o'clock this morning. It was just, <laughs> it's just been the same old, same old, but I know a change yeah, is coming. It feels like we had moved to Seattle Hayden, <laughs> with the, the clouds lingering, the patchy fog, the rain, yeah. but this is all stable air. Okay. That's going to be changing though for parts of the state going mm. into our Tuesday. And here's the latest with that severe storm outlook across the region. So pretty much all of Arkansas does have at least a marginal risk of severe weather, but the slight risk has moved a little farther to the north, including folks in Mena, Arkadelphia, Pine Bluff and Stuttgart. I'll get more into what we're expecting on types of severe weather coming up a little bit later, but out there right now this afternoon, radar not showing anything on the map, but there could still be some areas of patchy drizzle and also we're still contending with some areas of fog, especially around Arkadelphia and Camden, where the visibility has been reduced down to less than two miles. We're socked in with clouds. Temperatures are on the cool side, mid to upper 40s, and that's pretty much where we will stay throughout the day. Temperatures are not going to budge much at all. Maybe warm up a couple more degrees, but I'll have have more on that severe weather potential coming up on Tuesday and also a big change in the weather pattern for the latter part of the work week a little bit later. And Nathan, thank you. University of Texas and former UA Little Rock men's basketball coach Chris Beard is facing a domestic violence charge after an incident early this morning. Austin police responded to a disturbance at a home around 2 a.m. Beard was later taken into custody, accused of strangling a person. He faces a third degree felony charge for assault on a family or household member. The University of Texas released a statement this morning saying they are aware of the situation and quote are continuing to gather information and monitoring the legal process. Beard coached the Little Rock Trojans for one season, leading them to the NCAA tournament in 2016. Turning now to several other stories we are following at noon. The Missouri couple charged in the deaths of a Benton County woman and her unborn child are set to appear in court this week. Amber and Jamie Waterman's pretrial hearings are scheduled for Wednesday morning in Springfield, Missouri. Investigators say Amber Waterman kidnapped Ashley Bush using a potential job offer on social media before killing the pregnant mother. Authorities tell us she hoped to claim Ashley's unborn child as her own, but the baby also died. Amber's husband, Jamie Waterman, is also facing federal charges in connection with those murders. Jury trials have been set for both Watermans on January 9th. Meanwhile, Johnson County Sheriff Jimmy Stevens is due in court this week. He's facing several drug and gun charges. Now, a state trooper arrested Stevens in Crawford County two weekends ago. The FBI ordered the arrest after a special agent reportedly saw Stevens leave a home they were watching in a corruption and narcotics investigation. The state police say the sheriff had opioids and marijuana in the car and in his home. In a THV 11 update, police in North Little Rock are now identifying the woman found dead in a car over the weekend. Officers found the body of 67 year old Susan Hill in a parked car Friday night on Franklin Street. Now, right now, police are calling it a suspicious death and are investigating whether foul play was involved. The state Crime Lab is working to determine how she died and if her death will be ruled a homicide. Stay with THV 11 and THV 11.com as we continue to learn more. Arkansas State Police continue their investigation into the death of an inmate at the Varner unit in Lincoln County. That's about 30 minutes south of Pine Bluff. Prison guards found 24 year old Caleb Cogburn dead in his cell last Thursday. The Department of Corrections is also conducting an internal investigation into the death. Cogburn was only eight months into a 40 year prison sentence for rape out of Pope County. 
In other news, a big breakthrough in a case that has frustrated investigators and families of victims for decades. A suspect, a former Libyan intelligence operative, is in custody for the attack on a Pan Am Flight 103. That was back in 1988. Skylar Henry has the very latest from Washington, D.C. 34 years after a terrorist bomb brought down Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland, a suspect will face justice in the United States. The attack killed 270 people, including 190 Americans. The accused bomb maker, Abu Aguila Mohammed Massoud, is expected to make his first court appearance later today. I wasn't sure if, you know, within my lifetime, uh, we would be able to see the day. So, so this is a, a significant milestone um, for me, my families, and all the families of, of those killed. Four days before Christmas in 1988, a bomb ripped through the luggage hold an hour into the flight from London to New York's JFK airport. Blast was so powerful, the crime scene spanned more than 840 square miles. Investigators pieced together fragments of the jet, leading to parts of a cassette recorder packed with explosives. The Justice Department announced charges against Massoud two years ago and promised the pursuit form would never end. I did have a lot of faith in them that this day would come. Kara Weeps lost her brother, Rick Minetti. He was one of 35 Syracuse University students killed on the flight. He looked at the day that he was coming home as, you know, what a great day that was going to be. And that part always gets me. Masood is the third Libyan charged in connection with the attack, but he'll be the first to stand trial in an American court. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. The soccer world is mourning the loss of well-known soccer journalist Grant Wall. The longtime Sports Illustrated writer and CBS Sports contributor died suddenly on Friday while covering the World Cup in Qatar. Keir Radnage, a British journalist, says emergency crews treated Wall for about 20 minutes before taking him to a hospital. The doctors were unable to save his life. No cause of death has been released, but earlier in the week, the 48-year-old wrote that he had been feeling, feeling ill and that his body had finally broken down on him. He said he had gone to a medical center and doctors told him he probably had bronchitis. WNBA star Brittany Griner remains at Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio after being imprisoned in Russia for nearly 10 months. Griner was part of a one for one prisoner exchange for Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. But the swap is now raising questions about the growing problem of so-called hostage diplomacy. Experts say more foreign governments are wrongfully detaining Americans as a way to gain leverage against the United States. The State Department says it's working with 60 nations to use visa bans, sanctions and other measures to address this problem. It is not just cold and flu season for us, but canine flu and other viruses that make our dogs sick are very much spreading so far this year, and it is not good news. Bradley Blackburn has more on what pet owners need to know. Jason Smith boarded his pets over Thanksgiving. I was very surprised that all three dogs had flu symptoms within 24 hours of getting back from the kennel. Like people, pets are also dealing with viruses right now that can make them sick. There's canine influenza and pneumovirus. Most dogs will experience 10 to 14 days of runny nose and coughing, but there is a significant subset of those dogs that will progress to pneumonia that can be very life-threatening. Some animal shelters have had to suspend dog adoptions because of flu or pneumovirus cases, like Pinella County Animal Services in Florida. So it's once it starts spreading, it just it just goes. Dr. Cinda Crawford is with the University of Florida's College of Veterinary Medicine. She says the message is the same for sick pets as it is for sick people. Limit their activity so that they can get some rest and find them at home because whatever's causing their cold is likely contagious to other dogs. While there is no vaccine for pneumovirus, there is a canine influenza vaccine. So if you're planning to board your dogs over Christmas, now is the time to get the vaccination. The timing um, is so important because their, their antibody production is, is what needs to build up. Jason is grateful his dogs are feeling better. Monday and Tuesday got really bad and I got real worried that Fiona might be getting pneumonia. Um, but 
She parked up the next day. Dog owners should always be on the lookout for warning signs. If your dog stops eating or has difficulty breathing, contact your veterinarian. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. Getting your dog vaccinated for canine influenza may not prevent an infection altogether, but it may reduce the severity and duration of the illness. That's according to the American Veterinary Medical Association. Well, Christmas less than two weeks away and the crunch to get gifts is on, but high costs are making this holiday shopping season. It's a tough one for a lot of folks out there. We've got a closer look at the inflation issues still ahead. Nathan. Hayden, it's a cloudy and quiet Monday around the region, but Tuesday storms move back into the area and semi storms could be strong, possibly severe. I'll let you know what we're expecting and timing coming up.